today we're finally, finally, finally gonna knock out at least one, maybe both, of my challenges. And we're going to start with the sketch box challenge. You'll see that I have everything kind of crammed into the cute little bagu that um, Art Snacks sent this month. So this month's sketch box sent graphite based drawing supplies. So I have a Wolf's sketch set, a Crate of Color Mega Graphite, two Crate of Color Graphite Aquel, and one Mono Eraser. I've also secured for myself a piece of watercolor paper. It's just Fabriano Studio watercolor paper, nothing exotic. This is um, the challenge videos sort of round out the month's um, Art Snacks versus Sketchbox videos. So if you enjoy this sort of content, I highly recommend you check out some of the other videos for this month. And I'm going to draw my gray male cat Bowie. And I've got the reference on my phone. And I'm going to start with HB. And I just want to do a light sketch to begin with. And those of you who watch the blog, uh, watch the YouTube channel or even read the blog, know I'm not really in the graphite pencils. But, you know, part of these challenges and these art boxes is to use materials um, that I might not otherwise use. I'm going to try to zoom in because I know you guys can't see it. And unfortunately, my setup is still kind of terrible. I'm recording a bunch of videos trying to get back on track. Um, and I don't yet have a grip solution for my camera. So I'm sort of just trying to play by ear. So I apologize. I know you guys like a, a closer view and I want to be able to give you that closer view. Of course, this little Tombow eraser is not really big enough for erasing large areas. And this eraser is just a piece of garbage. Uh, you can check that out in the, um, the overview video. So I'm going to use a nubbin of Tombow Mono Eraser. So how's y'all's weekend been? I had a KaiCon this weekend and I'm a little disappointed with how it went. My placement was kind of crummy. I was right by the signing line. So like there was always a line to get stuff signed in front of my table. Not by me, of course, not Davis. Um, but people were there for Dan Green and Eric Stewart, I think. Um, I honestly am not a fan of most American voice actors. Um, I do enjoy the Let's Dub project a lot. I think they do a great job. But in general, I'm not into American voice actors. So, um, you know, it could have been anybody. And uh, it really wouldn't have mattered a whole lot to me. But I know other people are really into that. So, um, and that's you know why there was a line they were like camped out sitting in front of my table for like an hour before the signing and then one of the dudes was late so that really kind of ate up my saturday and sunday and i had a migraine um saturday and sunday as well so you know i know that affected sales because i just couldn't pitch as well as i normally can and on Saturday, we had like, we actually had a flash flood in the area. So I'm pretty sure that affected attendance. So those of you who do conventions know how quickly things can devolve. So that was my weekend and that just like flat out wore me out. And I was already kind of behind because I did MechaCon in New Orleans two weeks ago. Um, and I just, you know, I've like not caught up. I've been trying to build up the blog buffer. I've been trying to build up the YouTube buffer. So I just 
haven't really had a lot of time. Oh, and working on finishing people's commissions, that kind of stuff. All of it's important stuff, but it just means, um, you know, you can only do so much in any given time. So I didn't get around to the art snacks versus sketchbox until like mid month and to be honest neither box is all that inspiring for me so hopefully forcing my out of my comfort zone you know i'll produce something worthwhile So again, those of you who watch this channel know I usually um, do my sketching with non-photo blue first. Uh, if I do sketch with a pencil, I'm going to ink over it. I'm not inking over this. I am a little concerned about smearing and smudging. Not a huge fan of that. So I'm trying to work carefully. I've gone ahead and taped down my watercolor pet paper. Hopefully that'll prevent it from stretching too much. And I also grabbed a scrap sheet of paper because I want to be able to apply um, washes. And to do that, I'm going to need an area. Um, let me let me rephrase that. Okay. I want to apply washes using the, the watercolor graphite. Now, um, I noticed it did leave a bit of a harsh line, and I'm kind of lazy, and I don't want to spend forever coloring in, you know, tiny circles only to blend them out. So I want to apply um, a all over wash of watercolor first. And part of this is because I am, in general, uh, more comfortable as a watercolor artist, and I also can only devote a certain amount of time to these challenges, about three or four hours. Uh, so I really don't want to do things that are going to take hours and hours to do. So I know it's a little hard to see, but I am applying a fairly wide swath to the scrap of watercolor paper using the HB water soluble pencil. And, uh, if I sort of pause, it's it's because I'm trying to take pictures at the same time. Um, so that way you guys can also follow along on the blog. So now I am activating it and getting a nice um, dark, not too dark, but a nice graphite wash. And I'm going to apply that all over. And then I'm going to let that dry. And what I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping that you can erase these decently well, so I could maybe even pull out some highlights, which would be really neat. So we've got our first layer of wash, and that technique seemed to work okay. I really wasn't sure how it was going to work. So I'm going to allow this to dry, and that really shouldn't take too long because my air conditioner is broken, it seems like, and it's 80 in here, and I'm dying. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so the paper is mostly dry. I'm gonna go ahead and um, start blocking in different shades. Um, something I do wanna test while it's kinda early is I do wanna see if this area here, let me zoom in as much as I can, is erasable. So we've got our mono eraser, and it looks like it is slightly erasable. You can gently pick out highlights so that's going to make the Tombow eraser they sent useful. Of course, I erased the wrong area. I actually want that area to be dark and this area to be light. And I think as you build up more color, it's going to um, look more and more noticeable. So I've pulled out my long point sharpener from a past review. And 
something that's neat is that you can blend these out. I don't have a whole lot of experience working with um, water soluble graphite, so I don't know how common that is, but you know, it's not always not always possible with watercolor pencils. Uh, blending out sometimes is just not gonna happen. Uh, so it's nice when it does happen, you know? Sometimes you just have to take what you can get. So that's another layer. Actually, I'm going to... And I know I have a darker graphite that I could turn to, but I am trying to make each, um, I only have two shades. So I'm trying to make what I have stretch as much as possible. And hopefully that way I can get a wider range of tone. So what are you guys working on today? Are any of y'all painting? I wonder how many of you are uh, playing along with your sketch boxes at home. I hope I hope at least a few of you are. I hope this um, empowers some of you guys to give it a shot. I know a lot of the earlier art snacks were kind of daunting for me because um, they sound a lot of like acrylic stuff and I don't really do much with acrylic. So I was just like, what am I gonna do with this? Now that I'm recording for you guys, it's like, even if it doesn't turn out well, and this isn't turning out particularly well, um, even if it doesn't turn out well, I am still happy for the experience. I'm still happy for an opportunity to hang out with you guys and paint and um, hopefully inspire some of you, make some of you feel like, you know, this is something you can do. That's always important to me. I definitely want to give you wings. Okay, so gotta let this dry. So one of the kind of frustrating things about um, handling water-soluble graphite the way I'm handling it is that the paper is really wet so I can't go in right now and like directly add some texture. I'm still in a phase where I'm just sort of building up masses of tone. So maybe me doing it this way was a bad idea. But you know we learn together and hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes that I make to make your own mistakes. Which is good because you'll learn hopefully twice as fast because you'll have the benefit of having seen me make mistakes so you're not going to make those and also making your own so you know it's like two for the price of one. And right now I'm just blocking in masses of um, shading on Bowie. He is a gray cat so you know kind of lends itself to a graphite exercise like this. Those of you who um, have been with me long enough to remember the creative box unboxing and uh, challenge I did will probably remember that I drew him then as well. He's kind of my like Bowie or flowers are kind of my defaults when I need to crank something out for a challenge and I can't think of anything that I really feel inspired by guess because I love both subject matter a lot. Let's try floating a darker color in there using the um, 8B. I'm going to need another scrap of watercolor paper soon. Yeah, my phone screen keeps turning itself off. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm not even using a high quality watercolor paper. It's an all right watercolor paper, but um, you know, it's not really, it's buckling a lot and um, you know, it's absorbing the water unevenly. So this makes me excited because it makes me think about all the cool things I can do if I opt to use a more expensive or a nicer watercolor paper next time, instead of kind of going the cheap route. But since I didn't know what to expect, I think I can be forgiven. All right, 
I'm going to, there we go. See you guys in a, probably longer than a few minutes while this dries. All right, guys. Um, so it may be difficult for y'all to see where you're, um, you know, with at the distance you're at. But I lose a lot of the darker contrast that I was getting as the watercolor dries. So even though my paper isn't isn't dry yet, I'm gonna risk a direct application. And I'm doing that. Oh goodness. Just snapped right off with the 8B pencil that was sent in this month's sketchbox. Wow, snapped off again. And um, this is not smudge proof. So you want to be careful about dragging your hand across the paper. You may want to grab another sheet of paper to use as a guard. All right, let's try this method. Actually, I should grab a photo of it first and then... So it doesn't really seem like a whole lot of difference to me. I guess I'm going to have to be actually patient and let it dry all the way before I can attempt to mess with it more. All right, guys, so it's been a couple of hours and my paper has fully dried. It is buckling a bit. Um, taping it to a craft mat isn't as secure as it would be uh, taping it directly to the glass top surface. So we're going to get back to work on this um, illustration. Sorry, trying to get everything kind of brought up. After this layer dries, I'm going to try removing this so I can move it around and get into corners a little bit better. All right, so we're not finished, but I can't really do what I want to do with it with the tape. You know. see what we got in here. We also have an 8B pencil and charcoal, which I think I might avoid. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. And you can draw on it while it's still wet to sort of, um, give a darker, more expressive line. The problem is with the washes, you can't, you can't really truly paint with this stuff. You can just do like tonal washes um, because it greatly reduces the darkness. Like when it dries, it dries even lighter than the pencil went down. So it makes it kind of hard to work with.
right, guys. I told y'all earlier I wasn't really feeling this piece. Um, so I think I'm going to abbreviate it and maybe move on to something I enjoy a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out my reference and hopefully get this piece finished. Now, what I wanted to do is pull in some highlights using the super duper tiny mono eraser. Unfortunately, it's not. I wish I could show you guys. I can't pull in that much. Um, not quite working as well as I'd hoped. I know it is ridiculously tiny, so it should be ideal for um, pulling in micro details. Also going to try and tighten things up, bump up the contrast a little bit now that everything's dry. You know, sometimes it's important to try and push through things um, so you can continue learning. But I feel like this piece was kind of flawed from the start, so I don't feel any remorse about, you know, getting it finished and then moving on to something I, I enjoy more. Um, it is good to make yourself do uh, push through, especially as an artist, things you don't care for because you may have clients who commission or pay you to do things you just wouldn't normally do. Um, this is not one of those cases. So I'm not going to feel too, too guilty about it. Plus, I mean, it's late August, and uh, my regulars know I have September videos coming up, so I don't want to fall too behind. I don't want to juggle the sort of backlog I was dealing with, I think, in March. Like, right after MPAC, I just had this, this backlog from hell. So, so many things I was behind on. In these sort of instances, it's really handy to have a, um, like a drafting brush. Of course, if you're re-wetting areas and also erasing, you might want to hold off until everything's dry. That way you're not brushing eraser shavings into your wet, I almost said wet paint, it's not wet paint, wet graphite. I had trouble building up the amount of contrast I would have liked, but I've already seen what some of the other artists have done for their challenge, so I know it can be done. I'm just an impatient person. Um, I will say I enjoy the Conti pencils a lot more than the... Hmm. than the Wolf pencils. They're softer. Uh, they feel more substantial, like they're better quality. The Wolf pencils felt very cheap to me. Alright, I think I'm going to call it a wrap for this month's sketch box challenge. This month's box included Wolf Graphite Pencil, two, two Critic Color Graphite Aquel uh, Watercolor Graphite Pencils, one Critic Color Mega Graphite Pencil, and one Mono Eraser. Um, I hope you guys found this challenge at least entertaining. Uh, I'm not really digging the end result, but I hope you enjoyed watching me work on it. I hope 
maybe um, you've this introduced you to some techniques that maybe you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Um, and I hope you feel inspired to go out and work on your own graphite pieces. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I do the Art Snacks versus Sketchbox every month. Uh, from January 2016 all the way to December 2016. So I've still got a few months left to go. And once that series is over, I'm sure we'll figure something out together. Um, so if you enjoy that sort of stuff, make sure you subscribe for even more of it. If you enjoy our tutorials, uh, that would be another great reason to subscribe. I do a lot of those as well. Um, if you really want to help the channel out, one of the ways you can do that is use those handy social sharing buttons is there any way I can gesture this without hurting myself down below <laughs> um, to share this video to your social networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Uh, t no, I don't think you can do Instagram, actually. Uh, I, you have to like take a screen cap, share it that way. Um, Pinterest, all of those would be phenomenal. I would really appreciate it. Your good word goes a long way. You really help me out when you share my videos to your um, your feeds and you introduce other people to um, a channel that might be beneficial to them. So I see it as win-win for everybody. You get to look like the cool friend who shares good art resources. I get to grow my audience and your friends get to discover some new techniques. Everybody's happy. If you want to help fund more art content like this, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natasoup for how to join my community of art nerds. Um, I explain where the money goes and their backer goodies, including mini comics, uh, free downloads for my digital assets and more. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey. If you enjoyed this challenge and you want the rest of this review, go head over to natasoup.blogspot.com for the rest of the August Art Snacks versus Sketchbox, including price breakdowns, information about the products, and more. Um, if you're just into general art nerdery, it's also a good place to check out. So I'm Becca Hilburn with Natasoup Studios. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the Art Snacks video. Bye!